get ready to embark on an economic journey as we unveil the heartbeats of the Rwandan business landscape. This is the Business Age, your front row seat to the economic renaissance of the land of a thousand hills. Join us as we traverse the bustling markets of Kigali, delve into the success stories of Rwandan entrepreneurs, and explore the dynamic forces shaping the nation's economy. From the boardrooms to the street vendors, we'll bring you the voices of the visionaries and the minds behind Rwanda's economic evolution. Discover the fusion of tradition and technology, witness the agricultural innovations transforming rural communities, and explore the cutting-edge innovations propelling Rwanda into a new era of economic prosperity. From the city lights to the rural landscapes, every business is a story waiting to be told. Hello there. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of The Business Age. From the land of a thousand hills to catwalks on global stages, Rwanda is weaving a new narrative in the fashion industry. On today's episode, we speak to two different fashion entrepreneurs who will share with us their journey within the Rwandan landscape as well as across the borders. You'll be with me, Naringwa Fiona Mothoni. We launched Izuba online in September 2021. Then we got invited uh, to Ghana Fashion Week uh, in December 2021 again. And then, you know, the feedbacks were amazing. I had such a beautiful welcoming from, you know, from Ghana and the people there. Um, yeah, so the journey has been beautiful, challenging, but rewarding, you know, in many ways. Kizem is a London clothing brand that's established in 2020. Um, so I started this uh, business of fashion. Yeah, so it's the thing I, I loved since I was a child. And uh, I had a chance because my mom was a tailor. So I, I had a chance to grow up with my mom who was a tailor. I spent a lot of time looking how to sell clothes, how to cut the fabrics, learning about sewing skills. And uh, as I grow up, I realized that there is um, a need, a growing need for the locally made clothes. So that's pushed me to start my own fashion brand. So truly, Zuba started off a challenge uh, through a friend who I met here uh, during the ball. And you know, and we were talking about Fashion Week Kigali that was taking place. And he was like, hey, Luti, why don't you start, you know, a, no, I was telling him that I'm gonna go and uh, being, a, I'm gonna go and work as a stylist, you know, for designers based here. And he was like, Beluti, why don't you start your own thing, you know? And I was like, because I've never done that. He was like, but I think you can do it. And, you know, at the time, I didn't know whether I'm going to stay here, I'm going to go back to London. I wasn't really sure, right? Because I was working as a fashion stylist there. So then, I'm like, uh -huh. and then, sorry, the, the director of Fashion Week offered me to go to Ghana because they work in parallel between Rwanda and, and, and Accra. I love Izuba. I love everything it stands for. Just start by telling us your inspiration. Where do you draw the inspiration from? What's the story behind Izuba? Um, so Izuba draws inspiration highly from the Rwandan history, the Rwandan heritage, like our last collection based on Dabaga, one of our biggest heroines here. Um, so let's say we are a mix of uh, Rwandan heritage with uh, French touch. So coming from, you know, having French identity but also Rwandan, I like to mix this in everything that I do. So yeah, it's basically bespoke tailoring, uh, fusing French tailoring and Rwandan heritage. And then I was talking with um, Michael McKenby actually really helps me, he pushed me to like have Vizuba because he was like, Elodie, it's okay, why don't you just take the name of the collection and have it as a brand? I'm like, mm, you think so? And the, the more I was saying, is, oh, is, I was like, yeah, it's powerful. I was like, wow, actually, this is it. I started with a goal, with a commitment of sharing the richness of Rwandan culture uh, through contemporary fashion with the world. So I, for me, I use uh, 
It was a need of the locally made clothes, but also the clothes that tell a story and that sharing the stories and the message about um, Rwandan heritage. So my, my commitment was to sharing the richness of Rwandan culture with the world through contemporary fashion. So we fuse a traditional element with modern cuts and um, I mostly use embroidery, printing techniques and uh, uh, beading to not only embellish the clothes but also to convey some message and stories about um, Rwandan heritage. So the need was like everyone was, the, was in need of the locally made clothes so it was a need of the clothes and still now we still need, we still have a gaps in uh, locally made clothes because most of the people they focus on the evening clothes, like ceremonial clothes, but we don't have uh, swimwear, we don't have underwear brands in Rwanda, so it is still a need of casual, casual clothes here in Rwanda. So then the market is there, but, and, and the customer was in need of what I create. Yeah. You've said um, it's been three years now. Yeah. How do you see your business growing? What's your long-term vision? Let's say in the next five or ten years. Okay. How do I see it? Uh, well, I want to. I want to stay. I want to consolidate uh, my uh, my platform uh, as you know one of the the biggest bespoke tailoring for men and women here in the country, but also in Africa. And uh, I believe Africa is the future. So I believe as well the whole world is kind of slowly coming to us. So yeah, I believe you know we are here to also compete with the the, the fashion capitals and you know the other international uh, designers. I've seen a lot of things changed. I stayed, I started on myself. I was everyone everything. I was a tailor. I was in marketing. I was in sales. Everything. But now we are a team of fifteen people. Uh, the business is, has grown. I started on only one sewing machine. Now I have more than 15 sewing machines. I moved to the new space. Everything, even the income was increased. So I appreciate the way I am now today, but I still have journey. I still have to, to work harder. I still have a vision. So I want, uh, when I say like in five or 10 coming years, the next five years, I want Kizem to be an international fashion brand. We are now serving local, locally, and uh, those uh, visitors, like tourists, but I want Kizem to be an international fashion brand. We want to sell, not, not only to focus on the locally market, we want to focus on the worldwide market. Mm -hmm. So we will be an international fashion brand. And when you look to start a fashion business, yes. what are some of the investments that uh, go in when you're looking, whether it's financially or also in other aspects? Well, for to, you know, for the first uh, collection that I did, it was about seven to eight outfits. Uh, at the time, actually, I have to say, at the time, I, I created this mini collection for London Fashion Week, Mass Desmond Fashion Week Kigali, that was supposed to take place in July 2021, and then it got cancelled because of COVID. Uh, so I had this mini collection of about seven looks to create, and I think I had maybe about three thousand dollars, something like that. And then you know, then the more you sell, the more you have a bit of money, so you you know you invest for the next product or the next collection. So yeah, slowly by slowly. Uh, well, for you know, for sure, like you need the team, right? You need the team. So again, through the sales, but also through the collaborations, like you mentioned. So we had the chance of collaborating with the Marriott Hotel. That's our you know, first and recent collaborations. So this really, really helped the business, obviously, not only to just have this platform to be seen you know, uh, internationally, but also you know, here in the market, uh, here in the London market. And uh, yeah, through that, then I can finance you know, and, and, and help the business grow in having more tailors having a bigger team, having a, you know, a bigger space? Uh, for me, like, the most in investment in fashion industry is uh, skills and knowledge. Because, for, for example, uh, uh, for myself, I started with uh, an investment of skills and knowledge. I didn't have a lot of money to start a company, but the most thing is to 
to have skills on what you're going to do. So uh, I started with skills with small money, but when you know what you are doing, it grows slow by slow. So we don't need a lot of money to start business. What we need is to have skills, passion, and business mind. What are some of the challenges? We can understand it started as a, a challenge or a dare, if you may say, from yes, your friends. It was a dare. And now a it's dare. a business. How was business, it yeah. navigating? How was it? Uh, obviously, challenging. It's, it's beautiful, but it's, it's, you know, I think everything that is quite big and different from the thing that you normally do is very challenging, right? So you learn, you know, there's high peak and there's like very lots of stress because you're in a country that you're not really, you know, used to, because uh, I never grew up here in Rwanda. And also I don't speak really Kenya Rwanda, so there's also the language barrier. But mostly, if I have to talk in terms of like fashion design, I think the biggest challenge that we have here as fashion designers is uh, the fact that we don't produce textile, you know, in the country. So every textile that we have actually comes from outside the country. Uh, therefore, you know, I have to make sure that we maintain, like when I, when I, when I um, buy, sorry, uh, when I buy fabrics and textile outside, I have to buy quite a lot. And yeah, uh, and also, about, sorry, I'm also working with someone in Dubai to make sure that, you know, when the shops can't provide or they have a limited amount of fabrics, then I call my guy in, in Dubai that makes, you know, that just send us more fabric, so, yeah. Most challenge I've experienced, it was like balancing the creativity and uh, commercial vi uh, viability. Uh, like it was, I had, a ch I had a, of course, a talent of creating some, something, but sometimes you create extra. We had the, the customer not going to wear them like balancing creativity and com commercial needs, like to know what the market needs. That was the most challenge. The second one was like the finding raw materials because everything from button, zip, fabric, everything is, we import them outside of the country. We don't have any, uh, uh, any industry who are in specialized in Fab making fabrics and uh, those other accessories needed in tailoring. They are expensive and sometimes you don't find what you want because sometimes you don't know where to find them. But you know it is on the market but you don't know where can I find them. So, um, and uh, like it's not easy for everyone to travel going around to look for material, it's too much expensive. So we prefer to buy them with the local vendors. And the local vendors, they bring the, they don't bring something new. It's like the, the one that they know, they don't even know the type of materials or raw material that's made of that's fabrics. So they, they just need the, the profit. They bring the one which is easy to sell for them but they don't focus or think like, like a creative people who want like different type of materials. That's the challenging things. When you are going to source it outside of the country, it's too much, it's expensive. Like, like I said, when I started, I, I didn't know it was gonna be a business, right? At, at the beginning. So it's not like I had a whole business plan already made. So I feel like each day I'm learning something from like the business, you know? I'm learning how to teach, for example, like, you know, now I have a few assistants, I have to also teach them how to do things. For me to be able to teach them, I have to also learn, you know, I have to learn, like, not just like, you know, on the paper, but actually on the job. So as I go, I really learn. Where did you learn how to run a business? You said you grew up watching your mother, but from watching to actually doing, that's a big transformation. So yes. where did you get the skills? Uh, I tried to do some research, but also I attended a competition that's called Atwanda Wuhanzi. It was in 2018, uh, but I get uh, training for two years training about fashion industry and business in general. But also, you know, the way it is, like fashion business or fashion industry is a, 
an industry that's exchange every day. So you have to keep learning every day because like the shifting of trends, even the customer, um, customer needs, they change every year. So you need to learn every day. I do research, but also I had chance to attend that Atwanda Wuhanzi uh, incubation program where I learned a lot about how to learn a business, how to turn a talent into business, how to use your talent to make money. From your perspective, yeah. can someone make a living from fashion? Is it profitable venture? Of course, I think they can, you know, I believe you can do, I believe you can do everything, right? Everything you really put your mind into it, you can, you can do it. However, it's really not easy. Um, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's not easy, but once again, if you, if you find something that makes you unique, something that makes you different, you know, from other brands, you know, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's definitely possible, but you have to work hard. You have to work so hard. You have to find kind of like a good team as well to help you because you can't do everything, that's for sure. I'm comparing with the before and nowadays. Now fashion is a, a promising industry. Fashion industry is a promising industry. Before it was, everyone was, was like something that you can work as hobby, not as business, uh, and even according to Tyler Ling, like even the parents, our parents, they didn't accept their children to go in Tyler Ling school because they was like, it was taken as something that you can go to work if you don't have another option of it's, um, a real business to to work f just to get money. Uh, it's uh, a source of creating employment to different peoples and uh, everyone needs to wear clothes. And as a fashion designer, I think like we don't create clothes, we create like, um, I think it's like feelings. With the customer, they don't buy clothes f from us, they buy, they buy stories, they buy some, things that is going to be because everywhere it is far, it is close you can buy close but the reason why you choose to go buy the um, the designs from, from buying clothes from such different brands it's depend on what you you are looking in that type of clothes so um, there is a need of clothes and uh, everyone will yeah, for now, fashion business is a good deal for giving you money and creating different uh, different employment and different opportunities. Yeah. Um, what have been some of the lessons you've learned as a woman entrepreneur? Um, you have to be very flexible. I feel like flexibility is something that you have to learn because there's constantly, you know, less things that, that come, you know, or like, you know, just things that happen and you're not really prepared, so you have to be very flexible and kind of like you have to also solve, you have to be a problem solver. From where you stand, um, how do you see integrating sustainable fashion into your brand? Uh, uh, for, for us, sustainability is the things that uh, we, f we just used to focus on and it's changed our operations because we um, we mostly use the um, eco-friendly materials and we try to reduce the waste by producing some other um, product from the rest, rest fabrics and also I think uh, it will be our thing to keep focusing on because also we are thinking to to recycle or to upcycle the just to add the to make our uh, our clothes uh, to to keep uh, to to um, to stay longer that's the like that's the world we are going in because most of people they are focusing on on um, sustainability and uh, 
it's not only to help our environment, but also our customer. I think they like it. They they feel good when you are working in sustainable way, like as an ethical fashion brand, and the way also you work with your employees. We we don't work like overtime or keeping keep them. They get time to focus on the other things. Like I said, because we don't produce really you no know, fabrics here, so obviously it costs a lot more to be sustainable. However, I started my journey as a sustainable, uh, you know, brand, if I may say, through Agacete products. So we have Agacete uh, bags that, right, that we produce with the collective women in Yamata. So all our bags are actually sustainable. They're made from, you know, it's uh, raffia, papyrus, uh, so sustainable fibers. Uh, so yeah, so it's, you know, it's accessories right now, but the whole idea, the whole vision is to really go into more sustainable. The more we have, you know, the more we grow, the more we're going to go sustainable. And uh, what advice would you have for a young entrepreneur who wants to get into the fashion world? What advice do I have for them? Uh, be different. Be different. Don't do things that others do, right? Don't look, it's good to be aware of, like, you know, other brands, other artists around you. But I feel like the, the really key element is to really find not only who you are, right? You have to, basically your designs have to be a representative of, of who you are, but also they have to be aligned with the market demands. You know, so it's like finding the balance between show who you are, like show what makes you unique, but also be aligned with, you know, the needs in the market. To keep working hard and to be to be adaptable to have a, the mind of adaptability because as i said like fashion industry it's a, a changing industry about the shifting of trends even the customer needs it's the things that is changing every every year so if you are not able to adapt so quick you get lost in what you are doing. So if you are quickly adapted, you keep on up to date and you keep on your you keep on working on what you you want. We've seen that several designers coming up. Um, it's becoming a bit more vibrant. How is current uh, currently the competitive landscape? In Rwanda, when I'm comparing to the other country, there is no competition because we are still have the gap in fashion industry. But when I'm going to international way, fashion industry is a competitive industry. But when you know what you want and when you focus on what you, you are providing to your target audience, of course you, you reach where you want to be in the future. Or you, win, you reach to your target uh, or to your goal. So it, it is a competition but not too much. We still have a lot of gaps in the industry and we still have a lot to do. I feel like what I propose is something very different from others, you know? I don't look so much at what, of course I have to like look at the markets, you know? I know the brands because, you know, me, when I first came, I was a fashion stylist based in London. So before I started Dizuba, I was already, uh, you know, I already had a couple of, you know, shoots. So I was already working with, you know, some big brands here or knew what they were doing. However, when I started the Zuba, it had to feel very personal, you know, it had to feel very, like I had to bring myself into everything that I, I was doing. So, so yeah, I don't really, I don't see things as really competition because I feel like I really offer something that people don't, you know, the other brands don't have. You've said when you started, you were self-initiative, um, you did research, you wanted to learn different skills. How is the education landscape? Is it, does it already provide the knowledge or what gaps are you seeing when it comes to equipping young people to get into the fashion space? Yeah, for now, we, we only have one school in Rwanda that's teach about uh, fashion, but it's a gap. We do have a gap because most of uh, Rwandan fashion designers, they, they are just they taught their, themselves. So there is a, a gap because we, we arrange how to get some skills and uh, like 
what's needed to be a fashion designer. You just taught yourself. So there is a gap, but slow by slow, it's, it's, it, is, um, it is improving because now it is uh, on the um, high school, there is different school that teach about fashion and design. And we now have uh, a university, a college that teach fashion and design in Rwanda. So it will be improving. Mm -hmm. As the business grow, there will be some improvement. Yeah, and are we seeing more support, let's say, from the private sector or even from the government to grow this business? Yeah, there is a support, especially from the government, the government part. They try to, uh, they provide us some trainings about fashion and designing and uh, like just to be on the same, uh, to be competitive internationally. They bring us some professionals in uh, different uh, sector of fashion industry just to, to help us to learn from them. So it's, it is a support and we hope that we will be, um, we will be we will be on the same level as those international fashion designers mm -hmm. in the future, yeah. How do you see the whole fashion industry evolving globally and how does Izuba align with the emerging trends? Um, how do I see the, the whole fashion industry evolving? Uh, so I think, I think Africa is the future. I think, I really believe Africa is the future. I think it's the present actually and the future. So. I feel like there's higher and higher demand for African designers, right, on an international, you know, uh, level, scale. Um, and, uh, yeah, I can even, I can also see, I can already see, like, some of the Fashion Week actually being held in one of the, you know, some of the African countries maybe here. Oh, it's the right time to create our own things and uh, there is a need. So what you need is to keep working hard, yeah. Innovation, sustainability and entrepreneurship are driving the industry. The future of fashion is surely bright here in Rwanda. Thank you so much for tuning in. That's all we had on today's episode of The Business Age. You are with me, Narengwa Fiona Motoni. <laughs>